All right, welcome back to the 2011 Pro Circuit. Chris Bucket up in the booth with Gandhi Shockwave. Guys, we're watching an awesome matchup between two of the biggest names in Halo. We're watching Final Boss take on Warriors. It has been super tight. That last Game 3 went down to sudden death overtime with Final Boss coming out on top 2-1. to one. And Pistola is just absolutely destroying. 40, to 30, 40 and 31, his ratio of positive 9. But as good as Warriors plays, Final Boss is still edging them out. And I think that's because, for some reason, it's in like the Final Boss genetics. No matter what, as soon as they get into the loser's bracket, no matter how good you play, they still come out on top. It's just the most frustrating thing in the world to watch. DNA aside, it's time to get into game number four. Here it is, capture the flag on Countdown. All right, so here we go. It's capture the flag on countdown. First team to capture the opponent's flag five times. We're starting this one off with a player who has combined for positive 30 between the last two games. It's I Got Your Pistol. Both of our last two games, he's dropped over 40 kills. It's just, it's insane to watch Pistola play because he's just so extremely talented. But look at this start off strat right now. Warriors is already pulling the flag and Strong Tide's getting ready to get control of Rockets. Although he's taken down, they still had a great job and they're still in a good position. Sorry, I have to clarify. Our objective games. He's yeah, dropped over okay. 40 kills. Forums are going to call me out Forget again, about man. the Team Slayer. Yeah, yeah. About it's less one. important anyways. Exactly. Too, too fast. Right now that we're watching as Final Boss got the early power weapons, we have the Rockets in the hands of Fear itself. And after talking to every single pro, guys, the Rockets definitely the most important aspect of any game type here in Halo Reach. Yeah, they're going to have to be Rockets in this game. Way more powerful than they were in Halo 3. Way more powerful than Halo 2. They're like the original Halo 1 Rockets. They can get easy, easy double kills if they're just near anywhere near two people. Huge splash damage on the new Rockets. I love to see them back and use effectively. Right now we have Final Boss running the first flag of the game. Pistola has it at his jetpack. Snake fight though coming in the window. He's too late. Pistola puts it in. And now you have Pistola able to stay alive because Fear itself is going to get in time to help clean up the kill. Final boss working perfectly. Excuse me though, I missed a flag cap here from Warriors. It's all tied up one to one with Robbie B running a second flag. He's going to get stopped short, but Pistola, he's just running laps here, guys. He's already back in the Warriors' base trying to pull a flag to their jetpack. And this is what I expect to see from Pistola on this map. It's very small, and there's so many escape routes. This is like Pistola paradise. Yeah, the one, the flag cap that um, Warriors got in the beginning, it views right off their beginning strategy. A lot of teams have been using it, especially what we watched last night with Impact. Part of the strategy right off the beginning, go for the flag. They're going to know the opposite team's going to be focusing on the power weapons. Flag. And they gave him an easy 1-0 one, one lead in the beginning of the game. Snake fight pulling a flag. Robbie B actually playing defense here. I, I love the strategy that we're seeing from Warriors. Meanwhile, strong side is positioned up top with the sniper. And Snake fight's going to be able to run this flag in untouched. Did you see that route he took? Did you see the route? He went from vent railing through the flag as he jumped. Caught it on the vent rail and got shot. Went up into his vent, jumped down garage door. Take notes, that's how you run a flag. Yeah, we had not seen that flag run yet in Countdown. We started to see a crazy flag run going down below and then up the vents. But right now, Snake Light inventing new ways to run the flag. Watch his VOD, kids. You'll be impressed, I promise you. We got strong side position in the top final boss vent. And he's just no scoping his way to victory. Pistola, take a seat, son. Play. Two and to one, and Eel might run another oh. flag here. And you know what? Let's just stay on strong side. I don't care about the objective right now. Until strong side dies, stay on board with this kid. He is on fire with the sniper, and now that he's out of ammo, I bet he's going to do big things with his DMR. Killing three for strong side. The flags are out. Snakebite is going to rally this one in here for Warriors. Will they get out to a 3-1 to one lead here? Victor X trying to put a stop to this run. I really don't think so, Chris. Final Boss is swarming their base. Fear itself just kind of hiding around. He's taken down. They may have a chance now. But Victor X was able to sneak in, steal the flag. Rather than trying to fight a one-on-two situation, Victory is so smart, grabbing that flag, and he took it low. And flag check out taken. where he's at, guys. When we get a chance, I'd love to go to his screen. Drop. He's actually hiding bottom middle in the vents. And I'm surprised this has not been used yet, Chris. When the flag is dropped, there's an indicator for the opposite team. 
for them to see where the flag is. Victory X is doing such a smart job holding onto the flag. Right now, Warriors has no idea exactly where he is. And he's looking at the only entrance to that bottom middle area. That is... And oh, we see someone dropping down. Victory getting stuck in strong side. Strong side swooping in, getting the stick, the return, and the flag cap. Warriors, hello. Did they not get the flag cap? No. Who was it from Final Boss who stopped that? Ogre 2 did a great job right there. He feared himself now getting the return of his flag, but Ogre 2, knowing that his flag was their flag was going to get returned, went into the Warriors base and made sure to grab the Warriors flag so they couldn't cap it right away. I was so stunned by strong side screen that I missed that whole play from Final Boss. These two teams so evenly matched, it's hard to commentate. I'm absolutely loving what we're seeing here on the main stage, guys. I have to agree with you. Now, any other player besides strong side, that sticky kills. They kills himself and the flag guy, but strong side, the luckiest player in the entire world, gets away with it. And now they're now they're down. Right it's now, not three lucky, to two. consistent man. Ogre two running the flag, slight fumble on the sprint run. And now he's got strong side behind him. Strong side with the dunk, but victory is gonna come in and save Ogre two. Ogre 2 and Strongside, former teammates, now rivals here on our main stage. And Ogre 2 is taking the outside route here. Snakebite's going to cut him off though at the final boss, Small Door. Strongside outside. Robbie B was trying to get into the FB base. And Elamite Warrior is outside as well. So I don't think final boss is going to be able to convert. But check out the beatdown from Pistola. And he's running it in now. That's, that has to be a joke. That was absolutely <laughs> sick. One of the things about the objective, especially the bomb and the flag, they do more damage with melees. It's two melees to kill with the objective, three normally. So these players have been excellent in using the objective to try to get extra damage on opponents. You're watching, I got your pistol coming off the respawn, trying to keep this flag alive for the final boss to beat number four, but you see two members back ramps, they have Snake Bite and Robbie B. You and my Warrior Strong set also coming up top, and Robbie B just got the fresh rockets. Warriors in a great position to get a flag cap of their own. Three to two here, final boss with the early lead, but Robbie B using those rockets to clear the way. Now he's gonna let Snakebite run the flag behind him as he is gonna push into the base. And I love this bait. He actually let the flag go ahead of him, pulled back for a second, knew Fear itself was gonna chase, cleaned up the kill. They're able to put in the flag. It's all tied up three to three. Very good play, especially when you have a guy trailing you and you have rockets, you have to drop the flag because you can bait that flag so well. Great shots by Robbie B. Lands on that nade, but he's still doing a great job. Very impressed by this guy. Elamite right. running another flag around level two here, and that is the fastest Play. way to run Take. the flag here on Countdown. Guys, tell me, Play. how quickly can you cap on this map? You can cap on this map before anyone on the other team spawns, actually. If you grab the flag as you're killing all four members, that route by the evade right there, you can cap it before the, yeah, before the opposing team even has a chance to stop Play. you. Loving it. Right now, even my warrior was trying to do a little flag sprint, but he had evade. That one's not going to work, buddy. But let's go to Elamite's screen. He's taking the flag up top. Meanwhile, Final Boss is going to pull a flag in the hands of Victory X. And Final Boss will just punch the other team in the face with this flag right now. Great job by Ogre 2 moving down low to the tri lift. Both flags out. Ogre 2 down at the bottom vent is going to lift up. Elamite Warrior is actually directly across from Ogre 2. Ogre 2 spot him out of the corner of his eye there. And now Ogre 2 throwing that flag out bottom middle. Scott, you're wondering why he did it. He's just trying to put that flag in the most vulnerable position, forcing Warriors to go out in the open. And that way, he's able to defend the flag easier. Okay, well, thank you, because me personally, I was just very confused as to why he didn't just drop it at the evade. Or at least attempt to throw it in his window. His teammates were spawning there. It seemed like a good idea to me. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree, Scott. I think the window might have been a better play. But at the same time, right there, he was just trying to get away. And he knew, like you said, Puckett, bottom middle would be the most vulnerable spot for anyone on the Warriors to try to go and return that flag. Smart play right there by Ogre 2. Snake bite running the flag outside momentarily here for Warriors. But that flag's not going to get very far. Fear itself taking the shorter route. He's going just around ring two. Throwing some prediction grenades, trying to force Warriors to back off. He gets into his base, but he's like, guys, return the flag. <laughs> and this is always what happens on this game type. You can never predict if your flag's at home or not, or if it's going to be taken, or if anyone's in your base. That's why teamwork and communication will prevail in this game type over individual skill. And if you're not a Halo Reach player, I'm so sorry that you're joining us for Countdown. This is the hardest map to follow, basically. 
it's so easy to get to your opponent's base and pull the flag that it makes it incredibly difficult to catch. So regardless that you're seeing all of these flags pulled, only about 10% of them are going to actually be put in. Yeah, but I love that aspect of this map. It's unlike almost any other map we actually have ever had here on the Pro Circuit, where the fact that you have to play now with your flag out, hoping that they don't return it, it's just a completely new aspect these teams have to get used to. Objective dilemma, right, Scott? Yeah, exactly. But right there, that's a big miscommunication. Fear itself on the flag returning it, and Ogre 2 did not go anywhere near his base, and there was no one in Warriors anywhere close. Back smack at the flag cap point. Warriors trying to push in. Eomite Warrior going for that objective dilemma. Instead of going for their turn, throws out his opponent's flag bottom middle. Once again, we're going to have a skirmish. Yeah, fantastic play right there by Illumit. Like we said, and it's weird because in past Halos, instead of going for the other team's flag, the best idea was to get the flag return. But now with these three second return times, you've got to be able to throw the other team's flag out. It's the best strategy you can use. Strong side doing Take work, it. cleaning up the kill with a nice headshot, keeping that flag alive top radio. He's going to drop down as it looks like Snakebite and friends are going to get the return. The flag is down in his base. Snakebite dropping down for it. Pistola and Victory are there, though, and now Victory is going to run it towards the Rockets. And they, no team's going to get a cap anytime soon, besides maybe final balls right now, so i got to bite my tongue. But they just do such a great job of getting in the other team's base. And there we go. Victory is actually able to put it in after about a four-minute stalemate there. Both teams had flags out the whole time. Well, I had talked to Eomite before this match, and he was telling me about counter-capping in this game and how it seems that all the time, instead of actually getting caps on your own, it's so much easier to allow the other team to try to get a cap, kill them out, and the counter-caps are the best. You can see it right there, Warriors, tying the lead with a counter-cap of their own. So after about a four-minute stalemate, we had two flags put in in under 30 seconds, and now Snakebite is running another flag for Warriors. I love his sprint routes he's taken. Oh my gosh, perfect route again from Snakebite. He's going to be stopped at his window, but Robbie B is up top. It's going to be a simple drop down. He just has to avoid the grenades coming in. He's got help, and there is game number four. There we go. Eomite's going to put it in. It's all tied up two to two. That game time's exhausting, guys. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can handle it. And imagine being the players in that situation. Having a stalemate in all the other games is nerve-wracking enough, but in this game, with Sprint and all the power-ups on these maps, uh, my heart would be racing. Yeah, it all comes down to the communication. We have to give a big shout-out to the coaches in that game type. Symbolic and 6'10 Warrior. He's actually 6'10". It's kind of awesome. He's <laughs> towering over those Warrior <laughs> squad, helping them take game number four. It's all tied up 2-2. Two to two. And uh, doesn't look like we have the kills on the screen. There we go. 26 kills out of strong side. Positive 9 ratio. He was the difference maker. We saw a few clutch plays out of him. But really, Snakebite gets my MVP award for that just for his amazing flag routes. He got three of them back to his base. Couldn't agree more. But, you know, that whole collective of Warriors was very good. They always did a good job of getting into the final ball space and throwing it out. And the thing that surprises me is... I think they shut down Pistola because he went negative seven, which is unlike Pistola, especially in this series so far. He's been dropping 40 kills. Yeah, that's for sure. The one other thing Warriors did well is so good was use the objective. You called it Snakebite, running some crazy flags in that game. The entire Warrior squad all focused on running those flags back, all focused on trying to get the returns on those flags. It seemed they were the better team, or, or they were more team or team oriented. <laughs> That match. Third time's a charm. <laughs> all right, guys, it's all tied up two to two. It's now time to decide who's getting knocked out and who will move on in, in our loser's bracket. We're moving on to game number five. It's going to be Team Slayer on Zealot. Here we go, it's do or die time for both teams. Final boss was up two to one, but after that last game, we're all tied up. 
Game number five will decide which team is going to be eliminated from the tournament and which team will place within our top eight. Now, you want to talk about an exciting game five. This map is going to give everyone who's watching a panic attack because no one's going to know what's going on. There's so much to do in this map. Incredible shots by Snakebite. I'm already excited. It's only four to four. And this is probably the most practiced map out of any of them here in rotation on the pro circuit. This is one of the maps that actually came with the game disc. Snakebite starting off super strong. Scott, you're going crazy. What's going on? I, I just can't believe he gets into accidental melee on Victory X and then cleans him up and then he's finally taken down. Snakebite's playing awesome. I don't even know if that was accidental. I honestly think that might have been a call out from his team. Listening so well right now, this Warrior squad. But I'm going to extend on a point. This map right now, it's not going to be a stalemate. We're not going to see these teams slow it down anytime soon. There's this no is hiding, gonna be baby. Hell yeah, well, it's well, going to be Stolen exciting. Well, did a great job at hiding in plain sight, but there was no way that was a call. You're giving this team way too much credit. It was accidental. Scott's still defensive. Right now, though, you are watching Snakebite and crew take an 8-7 to seven lead. This one is going to be tight all the way to the finish. Looking around here, Snakebite is going to be taking out Robbie B and Evil Might Warrior picking up big kills. They are controlling the landings, and so far that is shown to be the key to victory on this game type. Robbie B being forced back by Ogre 2. Evil Might Warrior trying to help out, finishing off two kills. Meanwhile, Strong Side is on a killing spree. Four Warriors, they are now up 13, make that 14 to nine, a five kill lead. Now the unorthodox play style of Warriors on this game type, by putting Snakebite top middle, Robbie B's bottom middle, and Strong Side's patrolling the base, is really catching final balls off guard, and they don't know who to attack first because the all spots are very vulnerable for them. 15 to 10, five kill lead still by Warriors, and this one actually slowing down, guys. What's happening? Yeah, well right now, both teams Realizing that this is game five, this is the do or die game for their tournament lives right now. They're not going to want to be pushing in and charging without really knowing exactly where the other team is. Snakebite picking up another double kill. We're on board with Strong Side, the 2007 national champion. Getting punched around here, and Hologram somehow dodged another melee. And Evil Might Warrior, check out the teamwork. These guys have been playing together since around 2004, grew up nearby each other about 30 minutes away. And finally, they're back on the same team. First time we've seen that since 2006. I absolutely love it. And there we see just the natural chemistry coming through. Warriors still up 21 to 17 after three minutes. Impressive, impressive teamwork there. Excellent communication, strong side. Didn't even get nervous. He knew his teammate was gonna come and help him out. And if he didn't grab that health back, I was gonna freak out. Strong side right now just hit the landing because they have, you have two guys one shot. It looks like he's got a... A buddy down low, and they're just using the duo system right now. Strong side with no shield, still deciding to lift up to help out, and that is going to cost him. That was a free kill for I Got Your Pistola. Yeah, but great plays right there by Strong side. Just killed Victory X bottom middle, picked up that evade. I wish he would have stayed a little bit longer bottom middle, regained his shields. But talk about escaping. He escaped that last play with one red bar left. I can't believe he got out of there. Always staying alive for an extra five seconds. I don't know how the kid does it. Right now you're watching I Got Your Pistola 2010 Best Overall Player voted on by the pro players. Also voted to have the best close range combat, but so far in this game, Pistola has been all about the medium range kills. And check out the reaction time. Look it up and hit the stick on Snakebite in the background. Pistola is just amazing. Keeping the momentum in his team's favor, Pistola single-handedly is going to win this game for his team if he has to do every single thing. 31 to 26, a five kill lead still from Warriors. The final boss unable to close the gap. But remember, in game two, they were down by 13 and they were able to turn it around. I'm looking for final boss to have a strong comeback right now. They have all four members alive. They're controlling the top. They have three of them running together and Pistola's on an awesome flank. Yeah, there's a great play right there by Pistola. Finishing up a one shot on strong side. But he knows that the Warriors right now are at blue base, and he knows that his help is at red base, so he's moving back here. Smart play by him. Get out of there, Cam. All kinds of grenades coming after Victory X. Pistola trying to watch the back. Snake fight, though, is going to drop down behind both players, pick up the double. They now have another fourth kill lead. Warriors still staying on top. Snakebite is doing nothing but impressing me this entire grenade, this entire grenade, this entire game. Great grenade by Pistola. He is getting every double kill imaginable. 
Headshots from Pistola, 35 to 34 as final boss is on the comeback. Chris, who is doing the work over there outside of Pistola? Well, I mean, in general, this entire team right now is doing a great job of using teamwork. They know they were down by three or four kills. But they're using the what, what Warriors was using, the buddy system now, and it seems that they're doing a great job at controlling the landings. 37-36, just a one-kill game. Remember, one of these teams will be knocked out of the tournament. The other one will continue to compete in our final eight. It's all tied up at 37. This game coming to a close. Just 12 kills away now from Warriors, 13 away for final boss. And right now, Pistola looking for this new sniper. It's about to spawn in about one second. If he grabs it, he can be real dangerous with it. I love having you up here counting down the power-ups. Pistol finally feeling it's safe to make a move, but knowing that he's red health, he's gonna let Ogre 2 grab it, and smart decision as Ogre 2 is gonna clean up the headshot on Snake Bite to tie up the score at 40. And a good job by Pistola going top middle, grab these nades. Now he can pin this Warrior squad and help Ogre 2 get some easy snipes. You see those sniper trails screaming across the map. Ogre 2 is doing some damage, hitting bodies, no one in position to clean up the kills. Now he's cleaning up his own kills, hitting the shot on Elamite Warrior. That's number 41. Victory X is going to get a beatdown on strong side to take the final boss lead, 43 to 41. Shooting through the smoke, Ogre 2 almost hit the shot on Robbie B. Final boss with all the momentum at the end of this game. Once again, Warriors falling apart in a team slayer. Strong side trying to lead his team back into it, but Ogre 2 listening to the callouts is going to rotate, pick up the 46 kill, and check that out, Scotty. Put the sniper in his back pocket, charging out with the DMR. Ogre 2 leading his team with 15 kills. And it looks like he's not stopping, getting the call out that strong side's injured down low. He drops down, but knowing he's vulnerable, he needs to get up top. They have him pinched as it looks like Ola was just standing on top of their spawn. Great job, and he's not even overextending. Good job right now to stay alive and work with his teammates. 46 to 46, it's all tied up. Don't count out Warriors yet. And now 47, 47, I don't even know who to watch here. Ogre 2 trying to help out his teammates, feeling pressure coming from both directions. Looks like they're going to put a three-man charge over on Elmite over here at the red health pack. Strong side and Snakebite charging out to help out. They take down Ogre 2. Snakebite with 19 kills at this point, going for number 20. He gets it on victory. He's charging. Spear itself for number 50. Pistola's there as well. Snakebite is pinned. Pistola trying to finish it. This one can go either way. 50-49 Warriors up the final boss, Snake Bite with 20 kills. And there you see Warriors telling final boss fantastic games. What an incredible series. What an amazing finish, 50 to 49. One of the best five game series we've seen so far in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I, I can't, I'm at a loss for words. I'm, I'm very surprised right now. This is incredible. And you know you gotta think strong side, Elamai Warriors. So happy to be here right now. And you gotta feel bad for these final balls, guys. The way to go out, 50, 49 on game five. These guys are gonna be thinking about it all the way to their next tournament. 20 kills, a positive 8 ratio from the youngest pro in the league right now. Snakebite, congratulations to you. They knock out Final Boss, our number one seed. We'll be back to wrap up the match after a quick commercial break.